Hey, I'm Sean. I'm originally from the States. I moved to Armenia a few years ago. Uh, I live here now. Uh -huh. Our intro. Uh, I served in the military. I fought in the war. That's a little interesting fact about me. Uh, this this last uh, yeah this army. last war and in 2018 I enlisted in the army as well. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, do you still visit the states or? Yeah, I visited the states once since I've came back. Uh huh. Uh, made it back in time for the war. Yeah, I still keep my connections in the U.S. Uh -huh. And why did you come come here? Uh, Armenia is my country. There's not much else to explain about it. I loved Armenia more than I felt like I was an American, so I moved here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, cool. Um, and do you think you're going to stay here for the rest of your oh, life? The rest of my life, um, yes, of course, without and what, a doubt. And what was the war like for you? Uh, I've been preparing for it since I was like 16. I always knew the second Artsakh war was going to happen somewhere in my lifetime. That's originally why I joined the army. I tried being an officer, it didn't work because of health reasons. Um, yeah, I knew, I knew the war was going to come back again and we needed uh, a nationalist government in place. I knew we needed infrastructure and everything. That's why I moved to Armenia to work on all of that. Uh, I'm an agriculturalist, environmentalist by profession, but now I'm doing whatever it takes to help the economy, help the government, things like that. Uh-huh. And what, what was your time like actually in Artsakh during the war? Um, I took it a lot more lightly than other people. But when I went, I was prepared to stay there for a year or two years, however long the war would take. Um, a lot of people thought it was going to be like the war in 2016 in April. It was just going to be like a few days and then the war would stop. Uh, since the first Artsakh war, there's been a lot of skirmishes, uh, large scale, small scale, but they've always been skirmishes. It has never escalated to a full war, full war like it did. And unfortunately, Armenia did not go 100% into the war uh, due to Pashinyan, which is, I'm sure, a reason why a lot of people are here. Uh, there was not good governing during the war. I go more into that. Uh -huh. uh, I consider Pashinyan a traitor along with a lot of these people. Uh -huh. And what's actually happening here today? Um, so right now, people are democratically expressing how uh, they are not fond of Pashinyan for mismanaging the war. A lot of people would probably argue that um, he did this on purpose, he's a traitor to the Armenian state, uh, which I would agree with. Uh -huh. So um, right now, a lot of these people, uh, I'll make a comparison to how Pashinyan came in power. A lot of people were not pro Pashinyan, but they were against Serge Sargsyan, the previous prime minister. Uh -huh. So I feel like this is kind of the same thing, where people are not happy with the person in power, so they're here to protest. Uh, now, Vazgen Manukyan uh, is the current candidate. People are here, uh, I don't want to say behind, but uh, Vazgen Manukyan is saying, I'll be the head of the transitional government until we can have elections again. I personally am not fond of having elections again. I'd rather have a leader come now. Uh, someone like Robert Kocharyan, for example, I'm not his biggest fan, but I know he has the ability to govern the country in its current state. He's taken it in a much worse situation. I'm sure he could take it in its current state again. Uh, one thing I've kind of heard from uh, some people, and it kind of sounds like somewhere you're headed to, is uh, it seems like a lot of Armenians are against Pashinyan because of what happened in the war and maybe some other yeah. things, but there's no one really that the mass population feels is strong enough to step into his shoes. Is this the case? As you think? Uh, not with me. Uh, I don't think the mass population should decide who governs Armenia. Uh, I'm not a big fan of democracy. During Pashinyan's time, when Pashinyan was coming to power, I regret not just like hucking rocks out my balcony and telling people you don't know what you're getting yourself into. Um, I'm not a big fan of this protest now. Uh, I have nothing against Vazgen Manukyan. I think if it, was, if it really was a six-month transitional government, he could run it just for temporary six months. Um, that's why I'm here. If I thought Vazgen, Vazgen Manukyan was worse than Pashinyan, I would not be here. But uh, I don't have anything against the guy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, the man who was speaking at first, he was the first Armenian uh, prime minister. I correct? just kind of arrived. Who was speaking? Uh, um, I, uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember it, but he was the first pri uh, prime minister uh, in... Uh, Vazgen yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. the one running for six months. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. The leader for the yeah, next and six he, months. So he was the, the first prime minister of mm -hmm. Armenia, and he was also the uh, defense minister during the first uh, uh, Artsakh war, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because, uh, you know, even with my viewers, I'm still learning every all the yeah, history yeah, yeah. as it goes, because before the war, I, you know, I didn't...
know this uh, stuff and uh, you know I'm an outsider and I'm just trying to to show what I can show like a lot of people are coming at my reports and saying oh you're you're filming the opposition all this you're taking their side no I'm I'd, I'd, I'd be filming this even if it was supporters of Pesci you, know, you know what the news is on the streets what the people uh, show is what journalists need to show and do you think there's anything in particular that uh, the world needs to know about what's happening here or what happened in our side oh um it's all, I don't want to say all, but Western powers played much more of a bigger role than people expect. Um, I don't like using the word liberal, but a lot of liberal press um, that's financed by America's CIA, uh, Civil Net, uh, Radio Free Liberty here in Armenia, it's called Azatutan. For years and years, since the 90s, they've been pushing this narrative that Armenia is the most corrupt country, that uh, Turkey and Azerbaijan aren't that bad, they're like our friends. They don't outright say it, but that's the position they've been taking for 30 years. Uh -huh. And so during the war, it's, oh, protect our soldiers, stuff like this. But look, even a month before the war, all they were talking about was pacifism, how Armenia is becoming too militaristic when it was not militaristic at all. We were so far from a nation, nation state, and Serge Sargsyan, uh, his defense minister, uh, Vigan Sargsyan, they were doing those first steps to start making a nation army, which Armenia so desperately needed. And Pashinan, the second he took office, that's the first thing he took out. He said, no more nation army. He was saying, oh, why does everyone have to serve in the war? Our army is enough. So clearly he was wrong. Clearly he was a traitor to this country. And what percentage of, do you think of the population of Armenia is against our four Pashinyan? Um, long term, I would... Well, I mean, like right now, like after the, after the war and after what's happened, who, who how many peop people do you think would like him to stay in power and how many people do you want him uh, want him to leave? I'd say of people whose opinions matter, a very, very high percentage. But if I take the general person who brought, I'm guessing 90% of these people brought Pashinyan into power and now they're trying to take him out the same way. My issue is that protest doesn't solve anything. These people aren't very educated about this, the whole world. I'm not saying I'm much better than other people. I've studied politics since I was 16. I'm a huge outlier. But the thing is, I don't go into other people's business. I don't go tell economists how to run their job. I don't go tell uh, programmers how to do their job. Uh, you know, I studied politics a bit. I'm not here saying like, you know, I'm not making big statements. I'm saying what I know, and I'm saying Pashinyan is very, very, very clearly a traitor. His entire political party, Radio Free Liberty, these Western institutions, not even all Western. There's Azerbaijani-funded institutions in Armenia. They open their NGOs, and so many people work for them, so many intelligent people. It surprises me how they just don't hit the about page in websites and see who funds uh, these NGOs, non-governmental organizations. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. No problem, Patrick. Thanks for the interview. And uh, that was actually an American Armenian who uh, came to fight in the war and is living here now. Uh, we're going to have a full interview with him posted uh, today as well. Uh, and, you know, we see there's thousands of people here who are voicing their opinions. Uh, you know, we're, we're here to show you what it's really like here in Yerevan. You know, some people have different opinions. The people here do. The people here are calling for Pashinyan uh, to uh, resign. We're uh, out here in the cold to do this. We're going to see if this continues and uh, see what happens next. But please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, share across all social media. And remember, I'm an independent, totally crowdfunded journalist, so please support my work. You can do that with the links in the description. It only takes a few dollars. Uh, report and it makes a huge difference.